Hello guys and welcome to a new war game video today by me Vulcan and again I'm going to be joined by Val. Hello guys. And today we have another 3 versus 3 from the Reddit tournament. This is again the group stage matches and today's game on the blue side we have Gentle Warlords with Fuzzball Lord Walker and Captain John. And on the red side we have Poop Squad which is Sigmoid Bigfoot, Trailblazer and Turkey Man. So what are your thoughts to begin with? I think uh, Red has a very interesting name there. Uh, less <laughs> better. Um, I absolutely love this map. I think I'm going to hear what I'm saying. This is probably one of my favourite maps. Um, not because it's particularly balanced, just because I think it's quite interesting. Um, you have lots of varied action. So on, on both sides you have these sort of large mountainous terrain areas and you have sort of an interesting mix of infantry combat and very like you can get very well placed AT gems on some of these these sort of hillsides that will really inhibit enemy movement. Um, and on the on the right side, you've just got kind of a very interesting, again mountainous area with lots of infantry battles. Uh, the center is it's kind of it's a bit strange because depending on which part of the center you're in, you can either have these big long tank battles or you can have again more infantry clashes. So. We'll really have to see how this goes. Uh, and this is the first the first uh, map that we've covered so far with blue versus red, I think, isn't it? Yeah, we have a, a blue four team on the blue side and a red four team on the red side, so that's quite convenient. Um, very nice. Yeah, Chosen Reservoir is a very interesting map. I haven't played on it myself in ages, and I haven't seen other people play on it in absolutely ages. So it's a very interesting map choice for, for, like from my point of view. Um, and I'll definitely be interested to see how this goes. Oh, one thing I do want to point out at the start, two Patriots from Captain John. Oh, there we that go. <laughs> is some serious heavy AA. And on this map where the air spawns are so close together, that's going to be a big problem for the red side. Although, one thing that's very strange about that is the Patriots are starting in Juliet instead of... Yeah. Uh, instead of Charlie, which is actually much closer to Alpha where the air reinforcements come from. So what you could probably do is stick the Patriots in the top side of Charlie and I would not be surprised if they could almost hit the enemy aircraft as they came in out of their spawn. Um, that is true, although you'd have to remember there is you know, a few mountains in the way, so... Mm, yeah, it, it depends really how depends, the line of sight factors in but again aircraft are going to be you know they're going to be pretty high up <laughs> i don't think <laughs> you, mountains you think so, will really I, get in the way i feel war games aircraft come in at pretty low compared to our real standards but i mean again patriots always a good pickup extremely strong a uh, you know they're just like a brick wall against enemy planes but they're very costly um, and we've missed the deployment phase, it started very quickly, so... Well, we can have a quick look at what's yeah. going on. We've got some Bisons with infantry, probably uh, Canadian rifles, I would guess. Uh, we've got some V-150s with Navy SEALs as well, another guess. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Leopard C2 Mexus there, we've got M48 A3 Chaparral, I'm looking at the right side, by the way. Um, yeah. Centurion yeah. Marksmans with four of those moving up behind that massive convoy. So a lot of infantry, a couple of grizzlies with some more squads as well. And over on the left side, we've got some Kairoku WAPCs. Uh, looks like a blue for, or a blue dragon deck, I would guess. I think left is blue dragon deck for, um, for Fussball, and the other two look like they're going uh, NORAD. Yeah, NORAD, or one's America and one's Canada. Is that? No, they're probably... Uh, I don't think so. They're both yeah, they're both NORAD. NORAD. Okay, and on the red side, we have... Uh, one Eastern Block and two USSR, maybe, I think. Actually, no, I, th I think Captain Walker might just be... G or Lord Walker even might just be going... Uh... The Trailblazer's got Red Dragon, I think. Bringing in it looks that way. some Chinese units there. The WZ551s. Going to be bringing in some Lijuan, maybe. Some Tank Shashao. Uh, getting into Delta very, very quickly. Um, looks like they're not going to be investing too much into Bravo from the blue side, although that does leave them pretty vulnerable to helicopters, especially with that uh, Hayati truck just sitting there waiting to be killed. 
What about in this middle area though? It looks like the blue side's being caught out on the bridge and the Humvee CP is out in the open at the moment. I yeah. think they will be fine, but this is a... Uh, the MA-8Ts are charging. A very, a very fast push by these MA-8Ts. It's uh, quite, quite a good move, I think, personally. And these, these T-72Ss of Turkey Man have really caught our Captain John's uh, ground forces in this top forest. Well, the Chaparral's the only anti-air in the area. So uh, they have one Stinger C, but I mean... That was very lucky they got away with that. What yeah, about on this very... right side? Buratino tried to stop the push up, but uh, the Canadian Airborne getting into position nicely and dealing a lot of damage against the Spetsnaz with the help of the Pioneers. They are, but I feel that the 28 Muscat Pirates are really going to do some damage there along with the Spetsnaz, so we will, uh, we'll have to see. It looks like um, well, Big, Bigfoot, we'll call him, has made uh, quite a nice push with this BV-1 and some Spetsnaz GRU down the, the road into India. So we will uh, we'll see how that goes. It seems like Red has... To a slight infantry advantage, but I mean, the yeah. Centurion marksmen will destroy that infantry if they're allowed well, to. Well, it depends. So. A couple of them's already been destroyed. There was four there initially, and it looks like they're being attacked by the BTR-90s and being taken out. Um, the Canadian Airborne are getting chewed up by the Moskaya Bahata 90s and over on the left side, it looks like Blue Force not doing too well either, uh, with the K1s moving straight past Tanker Shashal. That's not necessarily a good idea. I could get shot in the backside at any moment. Not a good idea, but a very nice strike from that F1 coming in, just taking out that vehicle. And uh, I mean, they're they're pushing through. I think they they will make a, make good ground here. There's not much from Red to stop them. Well, I um, saw that um, the KF 4050s weren't really used very well with the Suchongsu, uh, which was a bit of a shame because they could have taken out those tanker shashel much easier and given them. The foothold in the bottom side of Delta. Like you say, though, there isn't really much to stop uh, this push coming in from Fuzzball. Well, that, uh, that a couple being of said, QW1 squads. That K1 is now on one one health. It's uh, been hit very hard. Still nothing to finish it off though. That's true. But look down in the bottom in Bravo. That Hayati you mentioned earlier is all alone, and those WZ551s are going to want revenge for this push on the left hand side. They've left themselves though very open. Yeah. And um, they're going to pay for that severely in Bravo. I wouldn't be surprised to see some uh, immediate reinforcements come in to near Charlie. Otherwise, they're going to just push straight through to their home spawn. A nice, nice uh, longbow coming in, doing a lot of damage here onto that um, a B, a B, B, BB-1, I think, yeah, and the T-72S. Um, on this right hand side, the battle still continues. Um, I think that's going to be continuing for the majority yeah. of the game. <laughs> I think it might uh, be. Nutritional warfare there, Canadian Airborne against the Moskaya and the VDV. Although I do feel that uh, Bigfoot is providing the better fire support with the BTR 90s and the Screzit there. That's definitely true. Those BTR 90s just chew up the infantry with that grenade launcher. In the Although center. It looks like they might go down very quickly. It's interesting because although. The Although the red side seem to have a massive advantage, they haven't invested in as many command units at the start. So Echo's still uncaptured, even though it's a two-point sector, and at the moment, the blue side's still racking up a lead with a plus hmm. two income. Well, there's, there's Hachi Nanashiki, some very, very effective, uh, very fast wheeled uh, APCs, recon APCs, should I say, just, I think, went and picked off that CV in Delta. So it looks like blue's really secured this. I mean... They, they've taken Delta, but at what cost? Because they've lost Bravo as well. So yeah, I, I think honestly they paid in uh, paid for it quite badly in investing in uh, quite a lot of CVs at the start. I think they had was it four or five CVs at the start, and the opposing team only had two. So they obviously had an extra three hundred points to throw at the enemy, and that's a lot of what's coming at Bravo at the moment. That's true, although um, Blue still has a lead and they're about to extend that lead to four points, although the Bigfoot's T-72K1 on the right hand side is going to equal or revert the point lead back to two once this uh, Blue infantry CV lands. But Yeah, I think they kind of forgot about that for a second. And that could be racking <laughs> yeah. up lots of points right now if that was landed. They already have the two point advantage. So, uh... It looks like the Blue side is actually done extremely well in this uh, this right hand sort of town area. Um, the Canadian Airborne have done a lot of work, but those Spetsnaz have provided some very good fire support for yeah. the Muscara in the town. They're very, very weak squads of uh, Canadian Airborne at the moment, but the Canadian Airborne, very, very good squads. 25 points, 45% accuracy on both the CQC machine gun and their main weapon. So 
nothing to be trifled with really and they do have shock training so they match They're up against the Moskaya Pahosa really well the Spetsnaz can be taken out at range though with the machine guns and of course the Grizzlies are going to be helping with that I think that BRDM just sort of goes in and nopes out. They need to be careful, the red side, that they don't completely lose control of this town because it will be incredibly hard to get back. And then with that high ground over Hotel, it's incredibly hard to hide a CV as well. So I'm, I'm personally very interested as to how this, this BTR-90 from Bigfoot got on the other side of all those troops in that forest. I think it drove <laughs> over the hill. It <laughs> drove, the hill, it drove maybe, past yeah, yeah. Uh, the Canadian Airborne there. Yeah, it tried to cut off some reinforcements, I think. But uh, at the moment, it seems that on the right side is where most of the fighting is happening. Um, over on the left side, there was the incursion into Bravo from the red team, but not really too many forces left there now. Just a couple of squads of Zanshi and then three squads of Manpads. Um, they're going to be picked off pretty easily. Those units. I mean, the the red side has has seemingly recaptured Delta to an extent. It looks like they're going to finish those um those Shiorjo. I'm not going to pronounce that. Those rifle <laughs> Japanese rifle infantry. <laughs> yeah. Um, and while I, I do I do quite like the the Shiorjo Buntai. There we go. I did it. Quite quite a bit of infantry. I, I think they will be will be outnumbered here. Um, um, the Shiju Bantai are going to take out the Tank Shasha squad and, and now they're not going to be engaged by the Zanshi, so I don't think... I think, no, they, they are with the light machine guns. Um, oh, okay, they're just going to continue firing at each other from <laughs> yeah, max they, range. They don't want to stop. I mean, we, we did comment on how um, Bravo was captured, but they don't really have much stopping power. They've got these Zanshi 85s, uh, but an unfortunate lack of any other significant well, ground Well, the troops. M1A1 Abrams there and the Leopard CT Mexus have been getting a lot of kills by the looks of things. Uh, DHS Mi-24P though coming in to do a lot of damage to some of these tanks. Let's see if the oh, chaperone can get the kill. The yes, very nice. Before the CEV gets killed. Another napalm strike on the right from the Buratino. Didn't look like it hit too much unless it, what it did hit well absolutely destroyed. But uh, some Pathfinders well, and yeah. uh, the Recce coming in to the bottom side of Hotel now. So. They're starting to get a little foothold there. Um, some VDV being brought up in the Screzettes from Bigfoot, and I like the way he's keeping his Screzettes on the side so that they can fire in if they get line of sight. Yeah, it looks like these VDV are going to go and uh, deal a lot of damage and take oh, B5 on the left. What's that going to drop a bomb on? It's trying to go for the JSDF Rangers. It's going to do a lot of damage. And it's going to stop those... Uh, JSDF Rangers taking out the Zanshi for sure, but the Nanayon Cheeky G, almost the perfect tank for this situation. Going to just sit back at range with its really nice accuracy and pick off that squad while it's attacking the JSDF Rangers. And if the JSDF Rangers get into the town, then they're just going to kill off the QW ones as well. well it's, it's like I said a, a few minutes ago, so Bravo, you know, Red captured it very early on with a, a very nice move, I thought personally, but they just didn't put much in there. Yeah. They, they have. They had two two units of Yanshi, and that just isn't enough stopping power. They didn't support considering it at all. Charlie Spawn is there. Um, Fizzball with his uh, Rangers actually in the in between Delta and Bravo. He managed to catch out some reinforcing Takashashal, managed to destroy one of the WZ 551s before it dropped out his troops and did a significant amount of damage to one squad. And there goes the second squad to the DMR that they have a nice range there. Well, the, the DMR is very deadly for these infantry, uh, much like the. The sort of Spetsnaz GIU, I suppose, are like a good comparison on this, or... Oh, AH-1J. Like more of each one. Getting a bit ambitious on the <laughs> left side. Might get taken down by the tank Shashow in gun range. We'll see if that happens. Nope, it's going to turn around, use nope. some Hydra missiles and pick off those two squads. So a nice job there. F1 going to come in and finish off the HQ-7 in Bravo. And it looks like they got full control again over that from the blue side. And things seem to have taken a turn for the worst for the red side. I think it seems like they've been taking a bit of a turn for the worst for a while. I mean, they made this very good move into Bravo, but you know, Delta was occupied by Blue. I mean, they they managed to recover it slightly, but it really has not been going too well, unfortunately, yeah. for Red. I tell you what, I think's happened is, you know, Red side didn't bring in, or they only brought in two CVs at the start. I think genuinely that the reinforcement points not just the fact that they've had that plus two income lead but i mean like in terms of actual oh, the, reinforcement the point points bonus, yeah, yeah that the blue sides had way more throughout this game definitely and that's allowed them to continue their pushes in all directions 
So over at Delta, I don't think the red side has enough to really properly reinforce Delta at all. And they're going to have to focus in the middle where they don't have much left. The momentum is completely in the blue side's favour at the moment. They've got a wonderful composition of forces. We've got the M3A2 Bradley there. That's probably going to get wrecked by the T72 if it's no, not careful. I, I don't know. It's, uh... Unless the T72 <laughs> is completely <laughs> useless <laughs> and misses. The, uh... Obviously, that Bradley had a giant Bible strapped to its front armor or something <laughs> because, my God, <laughs> that should have gone down. But a B5 oh, coming no. in trying to. Uh... Oh, the Bradley got the T55 A and B oh, as well. This Bradley has become death, the first destroyer of worlds. And the B5 got out, but it didn't do any damage to. The... Did a well, lot of damage it... to the M1A1, but didn't get the kill. So yeah, that's going to be able the... to be healed up. Okay, I mean, it, it does slow the M1A1 down, that's not going to be used in any pushes until it gets repaired, but there's already a hemp coming on the way, and I feel that I'll be oh, sent to... Look at this reinforcements on the right. we got uh, more Grizzlies with the uh, Canadian Airborne coming in, and they're going to take full control of that town. Oh yeah, I'd be very surprised if Red comes and takes that, I mean, well, <laughs> let's, just, let's just see if they do, and my, uh, me saying that has caused them to take it, but... Yeah, I think it's a very tall task to retake this town because they're being pushed in on all fronts. Uh, they're having a lot of trouble on the left-hand side. They've lost the whole battle in Bravo. They've lost Delta. Um, they're getting pushed all the way back from their previously very strong position at Foxtrot. They had quite a nice forward position. And on the right-hand side, they've just... They've just unfortunately not really not really captured much. <laughs> Poor Hanno Han Nonchiki, <laughs> or whatever it was, the little recon oh. tank got B5 <laughs> oh, no. all on its lonesome, <laughs> poor thing. Look at that giant giant black mark in the mountain from that poor, the poor grave of the recon, recon vehicle. Um, so Fizz Fuzzball coming up with more KAF B4050s now into Delta. Uh, those grenade launchers going to do a lot of damage to the Zanshi and probably take them out very quickly. I imagine so, especially with that Shiki G as well, that also has a grenade launcher and is a very, very nice unit. What about the Q5D coming in? Is that going to That's going to hit the uh, Songshu 85. Yep. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful strike there from that Q5D. Took out both the infantry units and the APCs in one strike. That is definitely going to take the momentum out of that push. Although this Nanyon Shiki G is still in the correct position to do a lot of damage killing off these uh, WZ-551s as soon as it gets in line of sight. Also, those Zanshi on the right, these Zanshi 85, only have one uh, RPG left. So if they come into line of sight, then they're going to get taken out pretty easy as well. well. I feel this is just... It's just not gone to plan, let's say, for the red side. They, they seem to be doing okay at the start, but they, they, they just seem to have lost all momentum they had and... Not really covered the, the sort of flanks, I suppose, with Delta, with the early Delta loss. Yeah, it looks like a nice Spiritino strike again onto the Canadian Airborne, but not really going to be enough. I think the Canadian Airborne a lot more cost efficient with the Grizzlies than the Moskayas and the BTR 80s and so on. So oh, definitely, definitely. Definitely done a lot better there with those particular choice of units. And he's brought in two T-72B1s, but because of the terrain, they can't really take, like use the fire support properly. Um, because, like I was saying before, the, the high ground over Hotel makes it incredibly difficult uh, to stop anything in the town, because you just can't get the line of sight in order to support any pushes up there. Yep, and saying, speaking of which, one of them goes down, they did. Did kill a, uh, a Nexus before, which is a, a very good, I personally think, Canadian tank, but the Canadian Airborne just in a great position to, to knock that out. And Yeah, well, they do have the, the Gustav M3, which does have 60% accuracy, so it's a very nice AT weapon with 20 AP power as well. Oh, the Spetsnaz being caught out in close quarters combat now, and that means that they can't oh, use their napalm yeah. launchers. And that is exactly how you counter Spets now. So very nice move there by Lord Walker in order to kill off those two squads. And that's like how many points going down for free? A like, lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot. Fortunately for them. A yeah, lot. just for a couple of Spets now. And they're and surely running the out. One went down as well. No, they. I mean, Blue Blue is truly taking control of this sort of town plateau area, and that makes it very hard for Red to push into India. And unfortunately for them as well, you know, there's not much cover. You got your tanks down and in hotel really don't have much to protect them uh, if the enemy puts ATGMs up on that hillside so we'll have to see what they uh, if they have any clever ways of attempting to recapture that um, again in the middle there's just 
But there's nothing there for red side. They've Echo's almost completely open. All it'll take is one push if if a uh, yeah if but Cap Captain John decides to go. They've managed to stop the points coming in for the blue side by capturing Delta now with that uh, infantry command. However, there are three KFB forty fifties <laughs> coming up the road, and it's not like, going to last very yeah, long. It's not going to last long unless the WZs can get there in time to stop that. Also, the JSDF Rangers on the hill are providing the recon, and goodbye. Yui ban. But a disgusting 40mm uh, grenade launcher from those KF K 4050s. Oh, another Q5 strike coming in. <laughs> this could be very good actually well, for Well, it's not going in the right position. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it's, it's decided it's, uh, it's given up now, it's going away. I think what happened is they accidentally gave it an order elsewhere and it turned off its course and then it was too risky to make it go round and and oh, did take another strike. Perhaps they were, um, they were trying to hit an individual target. Mind you, but... the KF 4050s did get taken out by the WZs, but the F 1s coming oh, in there. Not one, but two. One, one F 1, there's just not enough for these guys. <laughs> they need to okay, hammer so the point home. The Q5D coming in again. Second second time <laughs> round, maybe. You can do it. Is that going to wipe out the Sichong Su? Look yes. At that. It just, is. just going over the mountain. But it goes down to the F 4 EJs. So. Not a very favourable trade there for the red side again. Definitely not. I, I feel this game is, you know, that that's kind of how you could describe this game. It's been full of unfavourable trades. But saying that, red has managed to push some transports over into Bravo, and I think uh, I think Blue just realised that with the panic buy of two uh, AH1Js. They still have the Nanayon Shiki G there to clean up those APCs, so that's not too much of a problem. There's no uh, infantry in it, so. Nothing too much to worry about. A, a night hold coming in though. Although then again, in these sorts of situations, uh, you can never actually tell exactly what your opponents brought in. So for all they know, there could be a massive force there. Yeah, that, Han that Hachi Nanashiki. It doesn't actually have any ammo left. Oh my oh, lord, the eighty gem. It. Is it gonna hit? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> oh no. That was so close. <laughs> Turkey man must just be crying onto his keyboard right now because. <laughs> That must be self destroyed. That could have been a snipe there. And especially oh. with the, the CV down in Delta, they're still like losing points. And it, <laughs> honestly, this looks uh. like it's going to be wrapped up for the blue team pretty shortly, unless uh, the command in Delta from the red side can survive a little bit longer, the one they're bringing in as reinforcements. B5 coming in to try and take down that command unit. Can the F4 EJ take out the B5 yeah. before it gets out? I can't. Yes, that was a very can. nice move from Fuzzball. He saw it coming in with the uh, the Rangers up on that mountain just to the north of Bravo, and he noped that CV right. He's got to be there. careful that he doesn't move it back into the Yondava uh, oh, artillery that's, that's coming that's in. True. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was very close. I don't know why he's moving it back to the same position. That seems a bit unintuitive. Maybe he thinks there. it's back in the same position. The oh other team man! Expect it. <laughs> I'm just waiting for one of those Ondava hits to actually just land directly. I don't. On I don't top. think he realizes that it's being hit by the Ondava. Oh, just again, just over again. It looks like these two CF-18 Hornets are coming in with cluster munitions on top of the T-72K1, and they are going to take it out in hotel. So that is going to give them the plus two lead once again, even though the red side managed to capture Delta. Oh, Lewis, it, it happened. The Ondava took out the CVM. Oh, it did get it. <laughs> it did get it. Oh, my God. <laughs> you can just, just imagine how Fuzzball feels. He you know, he did that, that brilliant read and managed to move his CV out of the B5 blast only for, to move it right back into <laughs> yeah. the Ondava fight. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Wow. Okay, so the JSDF range is still providing a presence in Delta, which is going to put the pressure on the Trailblazer. The Trailblazer bringing up a Shulka, though, trying to get that into range to absolutely annihilate that infantry squad, which it definitely will if it opens fire. But um looks like Captain John's making some ground in the middle, pushing up yeah, the Canadian Airborne yeah. slowly up that tree line, which goes all the way to the back of Echo, and we'll cut off reinforcements eventually if they get that far. Well, I mean, they, they do have the manpower, all they need to do is push with it, but I mean, as as we've said in the previous cast, there is that sort of mental mental state where you, you, know, you think the opponent has much more than they do. I mean, if they push those tanks in, I guarantee they'll be able to take Echo very easily, but you know, there's always the worry that they have more than just, just infantry in there, and they've got 
the army of heavily armoured tanks, so we'll see if they do push. Yeah. Lack of AA on the left side at the moment. May cost them AH1J coming over the mountain very shortly, I would assume. And there's only That's one true. missile left in the HQ-7. Let's see if that MI-6 gets there in time to re uh, reload that. I think it will do. They seem to be to be holding this uh, H1J down at the back. Although honestly, with the amount of firepower with all those Legion and uh, light machine guns from the transport side, so looks like they're going to leave it to the I F1. I wouldn't really want to send that H1J. Yeah. <laughs> the F1 going to do a serious amount of damage to a couple of Legion squads then. Well, the F1 staying true to its name, leaving one man alive from the Legion. But uh, I mean, Red will manage to recapture Delta. It seems like they've, they've made some sort of good moves on this side. But they're still definitely... The H1J gonna take care of these WZs. I, I don't know, yeah. I think the WZs will take it out, honestly. Mm. Yeah, fire see. control malfunction. Oh, and the, oh, uh, and the, ninja. the ninja recon. Yeah. Evidently not much of a ninja at the moment. SU-24 taking up two Challenger marksmen and then gets taken out by a oh, Patriot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those Patriots <laughs> are now in an amazing position to uh, take control of the air on this map. Oh, with 5,600 meter range, that'll reach all the way to, to that back road, I imagine. So, a very bad position if you're a Red 4 pilot at this point in time. Some KAF V4050s arriving in Delta. Uh, they might be countered by these WZ551s coming down towards the PSAM squad, though. Mm. The Li Juan with their heat rocket are going to possibly be able to take out one or two. Nope, none at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's again the problem with uh, with the, you know, the Delisian and the Spetsnaz as well. The the rockets are... Oh no, the, these are actually the, the anti-tank Delisian, aren't they? They're not the 90s very right? They got one and a half KFVs. Yeah. <laughs> one and a half. Yeah. This is another another AH1J, I Another suicide AH1G. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I feel the, the points are not in their favour in that one. Yeah, I don't know why they're sending them directly over the squads. <laughs> well... I mean, they didn't. They didn't see it, but I mean, that doesn't change the fact that they just lost two two helicopters to APCs in the same place. So I'd be a bit worried if I were there uh, sending uh, any kind of Cobras up well, there. Lots of airstrikes coming in on the right I, side. I feel blue. Blue has just really choked out red on this right hand side. And oh, the F-15 C Eagle oh, is going to take out the Big Twenty Nine. Oh no, it no. Away. not quite. But red is in a. a very unfortunate position here. I mean, they've, they've almost lost control of the center area of Echo. Um, they they really can't even do anything on the right-hand side because I don't think they can push up there with the units they have. Well, Captain John sneaking up a Humvee CP to counter-cap Echo, which I think is a really nice move just to try and finish off this game. Mm, I mean, the, the plus two points advantage will get this finished within, you know, a, a couple of minutes at you know, the, the latest even. Um... Yep, yeah, Nanu on Shiki G going down to the recon infantry on the left side. Trailblazer managing to pick that off. That's true. They, he does have some transports moving through into the Bravo area, but nothing in them, and I'm afraid I don't don't think there's much they can really do with uh, them. AH1J finally oh, engaging infantry finally. from range. <laughs> with that, he's he's the the third time's a charm, the lucky pilot. Oh no, he's running away though. What, why no. why is he moving in a way? <laughs> You've got a freeze Yancy right there. I honestly think he's going to try and kill these APCs. I think that's probably more of the priority for him at the, I assume at the so, moment. But he could have avenged his avenged his AH1J brethren from before, but unfortunately they will stay on avenged for the moment. Oh look at those M163. CS's with the Vulcan miniguns in the middle just absolutely wrecking that Snezka. Oh, they they are one of my favourite units. They're 20 points, got this this extremely fast firing cannon, the Vulcan cannon. And yeah, you do love just... Vulcan. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're just an incredible unit. They really are. Um, so they're going to absolutely destroy the Pihota Smith. They're extremely cost effective. As soon as they get into oh, yeah. the site. Now, look at that. Oh my god. So they, they're instantly stunned. It's the same with the, the Soviet Afghanski. Just absolutely deadly. And there's nothing that destroys the enemy morale more than being mown down by a Vulcan minigun. So those range is not even going to lose a man, I think, in this fight. Yeah, they're going to take complete control of the top side of Echo now. And that Humvee CP, they're going to have a hard time trying to find that as well. We'll get close I thought, to it. I think, I think this is over, unfortunately, for uh, the red side. I mean, yeah, only four points a, left. Uh, they put up a valiant effort, but 
not really much they can do, I'm afraid. And I this think is a... they definitely had uh, like a strong start. They did. They, they 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 did quite well. But I mean, the point the points do say it all, and Captain John really doing a lot of heavy lifting for the blue side. And yeah, that was no, Captain John in the, the middle there. Uh, he's probably getting quite a lot of air kills though with those patriots and That's so on. That's true. I imagine so. But three thousand two hundred and eighty kills to eight hundred and seventy five losses is really 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 good in a competitive game um all the other uh teams scores again they're not too bad uh turkey man losing quite a few units though really dying for the cause turkey i man. think they definitely had a chance to get a foothold in bravo but they just didn't use it i don't think they maybe they didn't expect to and therefore they didn't initially reinforce it from the get-go and also the other thing that happened was the Canadian Airborne completely outshined the VDV-90 oh, and the, the, the Canadian Moscow Airborne Porter. were the real heroes, I think, of this map so far because I feel the pressure that they applied on that right-hand side meant the resources couldn't go to the left uh, in the centre for that matter. And it did amazingly. I really like the fact that the Blue 4 side actually won this game. Because we've seen Red 4 versus Red 4 twice now. And both times, you know, obviously Red 4 is going to win because <laughs> they, <laughs> that's, win that's the only statistic that can happen. But um, in this this time round, Blue 4, you know, they're going to win against Red 4, which is really nice to see. And it, it opens the door to some more Blue 4 play in future games to come. But anyway, any last thoughts? Um, I would say that this game has been... Well, uh, a bit sig significantly more one-sided than the previous ones, but again, I, I think I think Red had a lot of good ideas. The Red Four, they they made some very nice early moves, and whether they expected to or not, but they just they just didn't seem to capitalize off them. Yeah, and they just couldn't really seem to come back from the deficits they got. Yeah, the Red side seemed to take a lot less initiative, really, and uh, that really cost them. Some nice strikes with the Q5Ds and, and the Buratinos, but it just really wasn't enough at the end of the day. Um, but anyway, that's all for now, guys. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Goodbye.